Hey guys, Tommy Bryson here, and after about a year now here in Puerto Rico, I am going to be leaving Puerto Rico. And by the way, for those that don't know, I came to Puerto Rico under a tax incentive. And it's not really, for example, like a one-way thing where I save money in taxes. No, it's supposed to motivate me to invest money in Puerto Rico, which I did, to hire people in Puerto Rico, which I did, and to also spend a lot of money in Puerto Rico, which I did. So overall, it's kind of like this helps you, but it also helps Puerto Rico as a whole, which is actually a pretty cool thing. Now, you might be asking me, Tommy, if you have all these cool tax incentives and things are working out, then why would you possibly want to leave Puerto Rico? And by the way, Puerto Rico is an awesome place. The people here are awesome, but not everyone. You know, there's always a butt face wherever you go. Just got to be honest. Don't expect it to be perfect, perfect. It won't be. I haven't met a single place in this planet that is perfect. But overall, I love Puerto Rico. But here's the story and here is where it started. Um, earlier this year, I had some plans and I went over to Tampa, Florida. That's where my plans actually were. My plans fell through and I ended up joining this app called Meetup. And I started to meet up with all of these older folks. I'm talking about 60 and over. That was the club, okay? And I went bowling with them. I went hiking with them. I did a bunch of activities with all of these older folks. And one thing I realized was I had a lot of things in common with them because I worked so hard during my youth to be able to say I can retire, I don't have to work, and I've also have flexibility as far as where I want to live. And they kept saying this one phrase over and over again. They kept saying the word snowbird. And I was like, what the heck is a snowbird? And I basically did my research and I found out everything. And that's basically someone that spends, for example, like six months in one place. When it's about to get cold, they go somewhere that's actually warmer. So you spend, for example, six months in New York when the weather is nice. And then you spend the other six months in Florida when it's basically freezing in New York. That is a snowbird. And some people do it for quality of life and some people do it for taxes. You spend six months one place and then you get taxed at that rate, but then you go to where you actually wanna go to save money on taxes and so on. So you might be wondering, Tommy, why did you decide to be a snowbird? And if you are gonna be in Puerto Rico for six months, where's the other place you're gonna be going to for those other six months? Because that is what's interesting. Now, before I break everything down here, make sure to go ahead and like this video. On top of also, subscribe, because there will be more updates to this video, and you don't wanna miss out on them, okay? Now, here's what I want you to get out of this video. If you learn these three things, you can leave, and I will be happy, okay? And the first thing is, the $75,000 rule. And I read this study a very long time ago. And when I read it, I was sitting in college and I was broke. And the study said that past $75,000 a year, it doesn't really add any more happiness to your life. So once you get past that $75,000 mark, you won't really become more happy whatsoever. And when I was broke in college, I was like, I'm gonna test that theory out for myself. And with hard work, I got there, it paid off. And guess what? I'm here to confirm that once you get past a certain amount of money, it doesn't really add any happiness to your life. And what you mostly seek are things that are gonna bring you that state of happiness via relationships and also God, okay? Now, number two is quality of life. And to me, quality of life just means having a life that's fulfilling, filled with challenges, and also happy. And being happy involves a lot of relationships with people around you and who you spend your time with. And spending time with people overall because at the end of the day, humans are social creatures and this is very, very important. And if I'm being honest with you guys, here in Puerto Rico, I am a part of my community in the sense that I go to my church, I know my people there, I have these quality friends, but overall, my family here are two older women that are both past 60 and they have kids, you know? We don't really have that much in common overall. So as far as like the people that I can spend the time with and all this stuff, I don't really get that here as much. Now, the third thing is always think both. When I was in college, and again, I was broke and doing all this research, I read this book called 
The Secrets of the Mind of a Millionaire by Edgar T. Harv. I probably butchered that title, but the idea was very simple. Rich people always think both. If I can be here in Puerto Rico and get, for example, what I came here for, and on top of that, I can be somewhere else and get that aspect of happiness and everything else, then why wouldn't I want to figure out a way to actually do both? Now, by the way, there is something that I want to lock into your heads, okay? We always think that we have a lot of time because we never know exactly how much time we have left, if that makes sense. And I made up that quote, so put Tommy Bryson when you put that on your IG story, okay? But overall, it is what it is, right? My whole plan initially from the get-go was to say, I'm going to come here to Puerto Rico, I'm going to stay until I'm 30 years old, and then I'm going to figure out exactly where I'm going to go next. And this plan sounds very efficient and very well planned out and sorted out, but it only makes sense if I plan on living, for example, until like I'm 75 or 90 or 100 or whatever it is. But if I only have until I'm like 30 to live, then it's kind of like, well, then was that actually worth the sacrifice? You know what I mean? So it's very important to always think both, always think quality of life and always think about more money isn't going to make you happier overall when you put things into perspective. It doesn't mean you don't try to work harder to provide more services to basically add value to people's life, thus make more money overall. Now, here is where I'm going and why I'm going, and on top of that, the money side. Because whenever you get into the idea of, Tommy, you're going to have one house here and you're going to have somewhere else to stay over there, isn't that going to be more expensive? The answer is no. Surprisingly, no. And that's why this plan makes so much sense. So I'm going back home. I'm going back to Dominican Republic. And I was born there and I lived there until I was six years old. But since six to my age now, I've always visited at least once or twice a year. And I only had a gap while I was in college. And I always enjoyed home. When I'm home, I feel at home. And that to me is a very good feeling overall. Now I do understand the nostalgia effect of things where you go to a place where you used to be, you meet up with all the people you used to know, and you get all this happiness. But overall, it might be different when you're actually staying there and living there. I just think that it's worth testing this entire like, um. Prerogative. What's that word? Prerogative? 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 It's worth testing this entire hypothesis, okay? This entire idea. So although I get the nostalgia effect, I still want to go there and I want to be able to be right next to my grandma, my grandparents, all my family members, be around people that know me, that I know them, and all this other stuff. To me, I feel happiest when I'm there. So that's very important, right? To be in a place that nourishes you, and on top of that, I'm still able to do everything else that I have to do while I'm also there. More on that later. Later. But overall, you might think, Tommy, isn't that going to be more expensive? Dominican Republic is expensive. To get somewhere to live there is expensive. The food is expensive. To have two expenses overall here in Puerto Rico and over there is going to be expensive. The answer is, it's not as expensive as you probably think it is. You know, the good thing is, in Dominican Republic, we have a home there, or at least my mom has a home there. She just, she's not there because she's in New York, so I get to stay there. So my only expenses are going to be overall utilities groceries and transportation, which also means I'm going to save my transportation money from here, my grocery bill from here, and my utility bills, I'm basically going to spend it over there, okay? So overall, it doesn't really cost me any more money to be over there than it would for me to be over here. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what about work? And what about your Puerto Rican assets? Like, for example, this home you actually have, and what about your friends here? Okay, so overall, first, work. The benefit of working on the internet and being, for example, a teacher, and the way I see my job is I grab complex finance topics and I try to break them down where anyone can basically understand it. That's, that's what I do here. And I can do that from anywhere in the world. All I need is an internet connection and a camera. And I can have that from anywhere in the world. I can, I can literally work from a cave, all right? Now, number two is my Puerto Rican assets. The asset I have in Puerto Rico, which is of most value, is probably this home. A home, it takes money to maintain, to have someone come here and clean it up and so on and so this, and make sure everything's working. That's gonna cost me somewhere around 200 bucks per month, which is not really that much money. And I've also considered, if I'm really gonna stay there for six months out of the year, I could just put this home right here on Airbnb for half the year, which means it generates for me money, and on top of that, it gets used 
because a home that doesn't get used deteriorates very quickly, which is actually a very true fact, okay? So whether it costs me $200 or it makes me $1,000 a month via Airbnb, it's, it's still not really like a liability in any sense if you see what I'm saying here. And lastly, the friends I've made here, for example, at church, at the gym, these are all very, very quality people, so they understand this, okay? So it's, it's not nothing like personal or whatever, okay? But overall, again, I'm gonna close out this video with this, okay? We all think we have enough time because we don't know how much time we have left. And you might watch this video and say, Tommy, well, you're very privileged to be in a situation that you can basically just be over here and be over there. The answer is no, not really. If you think about what you actually want in life, you know, I have friends that they say, if I could live anywhere, I definitely wouldn't live here, okay? I don't wanna live in Mexico or Indonesia or for example, somewhere else. I really don't know any more places aside from those two. And the idea is, it's not as expensive as you probably think it is, you know? What I would recommend and my advice would be, put your goals on paper, right? And then make a physical plan and lay it out. So if, for example, you wanna be living in the Dominican Republic like I am, then write down exactly in what area do you wanna live? What is the average rent there? How much will your food cost? What about a car? Write down all the expenses and you lay it out. And don't stay in the tourist areas because there are places in, in the Dominican Republic that cost like, like New York prices and places where it's very cheap, like super cheap. Like you pay like $200 a month in rent, okay? So it all depends on where you actually wanna live overall. So once you write all this stuff down, I guarantee like with a remote job that can pay you at least $2,000, $2,500 or $3,000 per month, you're able to basically almost live anywhere around the world whether it's Mexico, DR, Puerto Rico, wherever you wanna live, it, it, all, it's, it all depends on what you're willing to actually do to get what you actually want. So my advice is always think about quality of life. Always think about how can I do both and always remember that past 75K, more money is not gonna make you happy. And the reason I keep working even though I make over $75,000, the answer is because I have a goal in mind. And on top of that, I love my job. You know what I mean? So whether my job paid me that much money or $2, I really won't care because I love what I do. And that's one of the most important factors. But if I can make $2,000 a month from anywhere in the world, I would still choose to make it home, if that makes sense, okay? But that's me. And what you want to do is you want to listen to me, you want to listen to somebody else, and then you want to make up your own mind. Never be a follower, okay? That's all I ask from you guys, okay? Now, thanks for watching. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you're notified, comment down below any questions. I'm here in the comments. And also comment down below DR, like the letter D and the letter R, so I know you made it all the way to this point in the video. And as always, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you're notified. Up here is another video, and over here is my face. subscribe, and as always, long-term team, officially out. Follow me on Instagram at Tommy Bryson.